This week we're exploring the St. Johns River. This is the largest river system in Florida and one of the few in the world that flow north. Absolutely beautiful, scenic views, the wildlife's incredible around here, but we came for the fishing. This St. Johns River system is huge. This thing is 310 miles long. It starts in Indian River County in the middle of the state and flows north, dumping out into the Atlantic around Jacksonville. This thing covers half the state of Florida. Today that we're focused on an area right around the Jolly Gator Fish Camp. So we have Lake Harney to the north and the Econ Lockhatchee River to the south. But apparently this is the epicenter. This is where you want to be to catch these shad and that's what we came to target. Shad and also these hybrid striped bass. This week's guest host is Jeff Cunningham. This guy has the area dialed in. He spends a lot of time on these waters. Launching the Triton, I'm super excited for what the day has in store. It's incredible. The beauty around you is just is breathtaking. The conditions today are pretty tough. We have a strong northeast breeze, you know, temperatures have dropped, but apparently these are the conditions that these shad like. You know, they don't mind the breeze. It makes it a little bit tougher fishing these super light tackle that we're gonna be doing, but apparently the cooler temperatures do help the bite. God, what a pretty morning sitting here. Jeff Cunningham on the St. John's River, something totally unique, totally different. What are we gonna be doing today? We're gonna be shad fishing, maybe a little uh, striped bass. Uh, crappie, you know. So pretty much this is central Florida, the St. John's River, where the Econ River spills into it. Super light tackle stuff. These shad, I hear about them, they're like baby tarpon. They, they, they jump just like a tarpon. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. Poor man's tarpon, they call them. So we're sitting here, it's February, it's a little chilly, a little windy, but you know, this is what they like. You know, we're just gonna be throwing artificials at them. Artificials, spoons, jigs, I mean, whatever. Awesome, well, let's get on it, let's do it. It wasn't a far run, you know, we, we were maybe a mile from the launch and, and we post up on, on a, you know, just a conversion spot where the Econ and the St. John's meet. And he said, this is, this is the kind of areas that you want to target. We power pull down, get set up, get the tackle out, and really all we're going to be doing is throwing these small little artificials and bouncing the bottom looking for the bite. So we're just throwing these little tiny jigs, that's, that's all you do, is create the bottom, slow? Drag them on the bottom and, you know. You never know what you're going to catch out here. I mean, look at this. 1,000 size little battle I got here. Battle two with six pound spider wire. I don't think I've ever used anything this tiny. Little baby dart. I mean, this is some I'm light throwing, tackle. I'm throwing a little bitty Johnson spoon. Just real super light, ultra light stuff. Creeping the bottom. So there's shad, stripers, crappies, hybrid bass. Large mouth. You never know. <laughs> Talking with Jeff, he said, you know, you'll get these waves of fish that come in. You know, you may not get a bite for 10 minutes and all of a sudden things go crazy. So, you know, we're just making the cast, prospecting, trying to, you know, some different spots and hopefully, you know, we find out where they're at. I got a monster. Check this out. It's like a crappie, but smaller. That was about 10 inches long. We'd be eating good. That's the other white meat right there, buddy. Tell you what, though, when they, these things are such good eating, you get at certain places, you get a bunch of these, make a meal of it. So the tackle for these things, you really have to scale back. You know, we're going for a one, two pound fish, so you don't want to bring tackle out here that you know that you're just horsing them in on. And also, you're, you're making casts with these super light jigs, so. You know, we're using very small pen reels, you know, like I said, four, six pound line. And, uh, you know, the casts are important. You gotta be able to cast these super light jigs a good distance, and that's the only way to do it with the super light tackle. So I'm making the cast, you know, and, and never fishing here, never caught one of these fish before. You know, I'm not quite sure what to expect, but then, you know what, I do get the bite. Whoa! That one's got a little more to them. All of a sudden, a little bite turned on here. It's hard with this wind to really feel it, but man, when they thump it, and these aren't big fish, but I tell you what, when you match the tackle to what you're going after, it's just as much fun, even though it's really light tackle. Oh, it's a striper. 
Oh, this is cool. I've never caught one of these. Come here. Oh, let me That's see this right thing. Here, God, that is cool. That's the first time I've ever caught one of those. I tell you, when you match it to the tackle, that little six pound, they are fun to catch. Little tiny dart just bouncing it across the bottom. So we're sitting here right at the St. John's and the Econ. Let's let this guy get back in the water. So these hybrid bass are also known as sunshine bass. Um, but the reason why they get the name hybrid bass is because they're produced in hatcheries. They're a cross between a female white bass and a male striped bass. They look a little different in how you tell what a sunshine hybrid bass is because he's gonna have broken lines in the front section of his body and then straight lines towards the rear of his tail. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Yozuri, fish the best. So we're out here fishing and normally I'm just so preoccupied with, you know, what's happening with the fish. I don't even have a chance to kind of look around and take in the sights, but you just have to take a moment at a place like this and really just take it all in. I mean, there's horses running in the background. There's, you know, beautiful birds. There's so much life going on around you that the fishing almost takes the back seat to what's going on in nature all around us. And they just come, I noticed this morning, like we, you catch one and then it goes slow and you catch one and you know, it, guys around you all catch them, so they're kind of like coming through in little tiny they, waves they of kinda, fish. They kind of come through in like little schools. You might catch one and then you might catch 10. Yeah. There he is. I don't know what, oh, little one. I think it's a little shad. Little shad. I think it's a little shad. He's not done yet. He jumped. Nice. First shed? Yeah, the first shed. Nice. nice. God, they do look like little tarpon. Careful there. Ooh, they are slippery. Just working that little dart across the bottom and boom. Crossed off the bucket list. My first striper and my first shed. <laughs> cool, man. Got one. Got one! These American Shad are, are pretty cool fish. If I didn't know any better, seeing them, you know, from a distance, you would think they were tarpon. They roll like a tarpon when they're hooked. They jump just like a tarpon. So you can see the lure for sport fishermen to target these things. You know, they're great on a light spin tackle. A lot of fly fishermen target these things as well. But you know what? They have a great history in the United States. These fish are also known as the fish that fed the founders of the United States. So, you know, they, they have a, a cool history. They live primarily in the Atlantic Ocean and they spawn up into freshwater uh, river systems. So that's what's so unique about the St. John's River system, that these fish have traveled all the way from Jacksonville in the wintertime, all the way up you know, to the southern end of the St. John's River system to spawn. Where exactly are we sitting here? What, what town is this? Uh, we're really close to Geneva, out here on the St. John's River, fishing right here at the mouth of the Econ. Okay. Uh, it's a pretty diverse fishery. Got everything from crappie, striped bass. We're fishing for shad. Uh, you can catch catfish, bass. And what's really unique about the St. John's is one of two rivers that flows north. And we're probably 100 miles from Jacksonville where, where it opens up, the St. John opens up. So pretty unique, flowing north, you, you know, and uh, fresh water here, right? This is fresh, and the fish are actually saltwater fish. And they travel through Jacksonville uh, to come down here and spawn. And this is only one of the few places that they actually come to, to spawn. There's one. Coming at me. Oh. Looks like another shad. <laughs> that thing is motoring. Oh, how cool. Not big, but I tell you, man, you scale your tackle back to these fish, and they're so much fun to catch. Look at that, just like a little tarpon. How cool is that? <laughs> Good job, man. Yeah, thought of it. So we're sitting there fishing, and all of a sudden these horses take off running. And I gotta tell you, 
I'm not used to this. I don't live in you know the rural part of, of Florida. There's not a lot of horses in my neighborhood. And obviously these horses belong to somebody and they're probably out here grazing. But to see these things so majestically running through knee deep water, you know, it was a sight to behold. So we had caught a couple fish and we're sitting at the mouth of the Econ and talking to Jeff, he said, you know, you think this is pretty? Let me, you know, let's run up the Econ. Let me show you that, you know, maybe cast a couple lines, try to catch a couple fish up there, but I really want to show you the beauty of this river as well. So, you know, we power pulled up, decided to make the run and go check it out. So this is the Econ we're going up now? Yes, this is the, uh, the mouth of the Econ where the St. John's it's the econ. This is pretty cool. This is totally different. You know, a lot of pasture land here. We saw those horses running around. This place is crazy. Got the horses right over there. A little bit of cow mixed in with them. How beautiful is this? So how far does this go up? This goes up? This goes all the way pretty much uh, into Orlando. Oh, wow. And those fish will get up in here too? They will. This econ river in itself is a destination. This thing is over 50 miles long. You know, and it, ironically, Florida Sportsman Magazine had just done an article about the Econ River, and I had just read it, and now I'm on this body of water. This thing is a winding river that just flows. It's black water tributary, you know, and it's known for some great camping, some great canoeing, and the fishing in itself in that river system is awesome as well. Yeah, a little lunch break. Let's go to Jolly Gator. Jolly Gator, eh? Yep. Afternoon break. Come back out and get that evening bite. Talking with Jeff, he said, you know what, this afternoon bite can be better than the morning bite, so we had some time to kill. It was lunchtime, he said, let's head back over to Jolly Gator Fish Camp, they had a nice restaurant there, and let's get a little break off the water. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Ray Marine. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. So we're sitting there having lunch and I strike up a conversation with a guy at the table next to me. He was inquiring about what we were doing. And this guy is Captain Bruce. This guy actually runs airboat tours on the St. John's. He's nice enough, he offers us the opportunity to go for an airboat ride. You know what, I've never been on an airboat. I saw the thing sitting there when I pulled in. I was definitely gonna take him up on his offer. So running out, um, we're going down to, I think he called it Puzzle Lake. Um, you know, and you see once you get out there why it's Puzzle Lake. It's pretty much unnavigable by a smaller boat. Airboat is definitely necessary, but you're getting out here, you're seeing the bird life, you're seeing the alligators. You know, we actually take a stop on one of these shell mounds. Bruce explains to us this, this, the whole history behind this area. Bruce Fryer, Central Florida Airboat Tours, gracious enough to take us out here. What can you tell me? Where are we at? What, tell me something about this area. We are actually on Puzzle Lake. This is uh, south of Highway 46 and uh, south of Lake Harney, and we're in the St. Johns River. And where are we exactly right now? What is this spot right here you stopped at? Well, we've run the boat up on top of one of the old Indian shell mounds. There are many of them out here. They're every five or six miles. The Indians would move up and down the river, and they would collect the shells and fish and turtles and whatever else they could find to eat. They would gather it all, and they would bring them to these mounds and they would pick the shells and eat the meat and pile the shells up in a pile. And uh, they would camp on these mounds, they camped on them. And if you move five or six miles up and down the river, north or south, you'll find another Indian mound. Oh wow, so this thing has gotta be a thousand, thousand years old. It is, uh, they found pottery and artifacts that date back to well over 1,000 years. Uh, a lot of people live here all their life and never get to see any of this. Uh, we are just uh, south of the Jolly Gator Fish Camp uh, on Highway 46 and in the Puzzle Lake area. A lot of people come here and fish and uh, they catch shad, catfish, uh, there's uh, brim and bass and panfish and the fishing is excellent in this area and it's, it's pristine uh, uh, condition. It's, it, the water's really, the water quality and all are really good here. And if it's something, if you don't even want to come out here and go fishing, you go for an airboat boat tour, you come out here, you can see the gators. White pelicans that we saw. I mean, there's so much to see yeah, out absolutely. here. Absolutely. This, this floodplain is a bird sanctuary. There's over 200 different types of birds that live along this marsh, as well as the white pelicans that migrate here for the winter time. And uh, we have bald eagles and blue herring and white ibis, uh, along with the gators and the turtles and, and uh, different things you see on the river. Right, I'm glad we got to experience this place. Is 
truly unique and I appreciate you showing it to us. Well, thanks for coming. We wrap up the airboat ride, but you know what? Now it's getting to be prime time. It, you know, the bites should be getting good. We decide let's run back over and let's get right back where we were. We were getting the bites earlier, right where the Econ and the St. John's meet. Florida is just such an amazing place. You know, I myself, you know, lived here forever and never fished this body of water. There's so many different types and bodies of water and varieties of fish that you can catch. You know, you can live here your whole life and, and not see it all. That's the great thing about Florida. Oh, yeah. That big old shad? Big old shad! That's why we came? Look at that thing. How cool is that in the water? Woo, this is one of those little, ah! <laughs> Just like a little baby tarpon. Jumped right off. Oh, how cool is that? Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Triton Boats. We take America fishing. It, the timing is right. The light is getting low. You know, this is when you want to be here. You know, and not only is it it's even more beautiful than it was earlier. The, the bite is turning on and immediately we know you you make a couple casts, you get hit, you get a bite. You know, my excitement level is going up. I know that the timing is just right. Feels like a better one. Looks like a little better fish here. Oh, it's another striper. Rolling across the bottom, that jig. And it's a striped bass for sure. How cool that fish is. Somewhat reminds me of like a fat snook. Mouth like him. Good fighting, you know. Pretty common here in the St. John's, you know, this is, you know, as far south as they're gonna get. I know at least on the east coast, this is as far south as they get. You come in this St. John's uh, body of water river system, this is where you can target them. Cool, huh? Pretty fish. These hybrid bass, man, these things are little tough little guys, you know. They're, they're aggressive feeders, they're known for their, you know, their strong fights, and apparently pretty good table fare as well. It's, the bite, the bite is supposed to be better at night, and I tell you, it's getting, look at this jumping, oh! Come through in a school and you get in them. It's like catching little baby tarpon. It's exactly what's like a little creek tarpon. They take a fly too, which a lot of people do. A little windy today. They may try it here in a little bit if it, this bite continues to be good. Look at this one. Another good one. Oh, there he went. Pulled him right there. How cool is that? Got to go easy on him, man. He's straightening his hooks right out. It's pretty amazing that we're just sitting here just outside of Orlando, probably 30 minutes outside of Orlando, and it's like real old Florida. I mean, th this place is, is something totally different than Mickey Mouse and what you would think of as a metropolis of Orlando, and you can come right out here and, you know, there's so much to do out here. <laughs> Look at this. The sky is like pink. It's beautiful. White pelicans in the background. Drag the screaming. It's almost poetic. Oh, it must be another striper. There they are. They're broad bodied. It's almost like they turn their bodies. And they put up a fight. Another striped bass. Funny because they almost have a body similar in style to the shad. This must be a hybrid. Apparently, if the stripes are broken, it's a hybrid. If they're solid, it's a true striper. Look at the colors. Wow. All right, let's get back in the water. All right, buddy. Here we go. Mm. Cool. Ah, yes. So we caught a ton of fish, the sun is setting, and we decided to you know, make our way back to the boat ramp. And I'm gonna tell you, 
We were greeted with the most beautiful sunset that you could possibly imagine. You know, the beauty of this place is just magnified this time of the day. The light is getting low, the birds are flying away, and I tell you what, you know, this area is just one of those places that sometime in your life you just have to come and visit. This is truly old Florida. This area where the St. John's and the Econ converge is a beautiful and unique destination. I thought I could catch the drone, is what I thought. And you said, grab the legs. And I didn't mean, no, you meant like the, those aren't, those were feet. I said grab the feet. Oh, you did. I thought you said grab the legs. I think you said grab the legs, and I grabbed the legs. Well, there's not enough clearance for your fingers between the blades and the legs, apparently. I lost the tip of my finger. But you know what? <laughs> if you're gonna be dumb, you better be tough. The canoe and just exploring. You ever take your family out and just have fun? Fish on. Bottom on. That's a good one right there. Nice. I gotta put my pickle down. That's hard, buddy. See your embers burning hot on the